You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Addressing Gettysburg takeover of the History Underground's YouTube channel. Unprecedented. No one has ever done this before except for the people that I got the idea from. (laughs) And uh, you may be saying, who is this uh, person? Uh, Goofy? bald, wearing a hat. Uh, That would be me. I'm Matt, and I am uh, the host of Addressing Gettysburg, and thank you for indulging us as we take over JD's channel. Of course, let's not uh, not dally anymore talking about me, because you don't care about who I am. You care about the people that we're going to interview today. And we're going to interview two very interesting people. Uh, You know one of them already, JD. Hello, JD. Hello. How are you? Uh, we'll see here in about an hour. Uh, we'll, we'll know if I've made a terrible mistake or not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and thank you for, for making that mistake. And uh, with JD is a friend of mine and a friend of JD's now. He owns the Gettysburg Museum of History here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not exaggerating when I tell you that this is the best museum in the world. I'm not exaggerating. I truly believe that. It's got some of the coolest artifacts. His name is Eric Dorr. Hello, Eric. Welcome to the show. Hello, Matt. Nice to, nice to be on, and uh, thanks for that great plug right there. Absolutely. I, I, I happen to agree with you. But. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance I get, Eric, when, when people ask me, are there any good museums here, I tell them, yours. Great. Always. I appreciate this that. really confusing because I keep thinking you're talking to me and you're not. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Eric with a K. Yeah. And that, that person, the disembodied voice that you just heard is Eric, the producer. He's the producer of my show, Addressing Gettysburg. Anyway, so you guys are here uh, to talk about this exciting new series that you've been filming for, what, uh, all day today or all weekend? or uh, Yeah, today, today was our first day of, of filming. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And um, what is the name of the, the series going to be? So the the name of the series is going to be American Artifact. American Artifact. Yeah. That harkens me back to uh, a project, uh, Eric, uh, with a K, that you and I both uh, worked on uh, about 10 years ago. Oh, yes. Uh, fond memories. Um, <laughs> Matt and I have some history. Uh, we worked on a show called uh, um, American Museum yes. and it never really got picked up. But Matt actually filmed my very first sizzle reel for right. that project, and uh, we had some fun with that. Yeah. But it never got picked up, and um, it was still a lot of fun. And uh, you know, uh, I was always disappointed that it didn't really take off. But I guess it was not the right moment in time. No, and I think now it is. It was a fortuitous meeting that you had with uh, JD. Where did you guys meet? Uh, met, at a, met at a restaurant. So, so we have a mutual friend uh, by the name of Frank Buck. Okay. Um, so the, the Buck family is getting ready to launch a, a new museum in Gettysburg uh-huh. uh, called the World War II. Oh, American okay. Experience. I knew I knew that name from something. Okay. So that's yeah. who's doing the World War II museum. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I mean, it's going to be incredible. Yeah. All kinds of cool it vehicles cool. And, and things like that. Uh, so, so I'm pumped for, for that to open. But anyway, um, he, he invited me to, to dinner and uh, Eric was there. So, so we got to talking and, you know, of course, there's the, the mutual love of history and, and things like that. Um, when, whenever I was running this this never ending Gettysburg series that I'm doing right now, uh, which it, it is ending here pretty soon. I think within the next couple of weeks, I'll have my last Gettysburg episode. But I had tons of people that kept commenting and, and sending me messages and things like that saying, hey, you need to go to the Gettysburg Museum of History. Like, it's unbelievable. They have this, they have that. Uh, so, so it was kind of, like you said, a fortuitous meeting yeah. that, that we both connected. And uh, Eric invited me to the museum. And uh, really, it was a, a spur of the moment thing. Like, it, it wasn't planned on, on my last trip here. Uh, so we went in there and um, the, the, whenever I walked into the museum, uh, I felt like, like Chief Brody. In uh, in Jaws, yes. where he sees the shark for the first time, and then he says, "We're going to need a bigger boat." That's, that's how I felt. Because my my intention was to go in there, uh, you know, film an episode, in, integrate it in, and yeah. I was like, there, "There's no way." There, there's no way I can get all of this into an episode. Because there's so, and then let's explain this to people. So, sure. the, the style of museum that you have is more like an old roadside museum, kind of like a like a Ripley's museum type of thing, right? More like a what are they? What do they used to call them? You know what I'm saying? Um, I wouldn't call it like a Ripley Museum. I mean, there's certainly some 
um, unusual things there. But I mean but, more <laughs> the style of how it's set up. Yeah, it's it's like an old-fashioned museum. It's not like a modern museum with uh, a lot of text panels and, and imagery right. and, and push buttons and things like that. It's 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 artifact base and 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 there's a lot of them but you know the, the the biggest mistake people make when they come in and a lot of people have come in because of seeing some of the history channel shows that I've done like American Pickers and you know and and they had only filmed the Civil War part and right. you know a lot of people only associate Gettysburg with Civil War right. and uh, my museum is a history museum and we interpret not just the Civil War and we have a, a, a nice collection of those artifacts but we interpret World War One, World War Two, political history so basically it's a military and political history museum and some other things thrown in too we try to tr- tie a lot of things to Gettysburg you know um a lot of people, um, outsiders who come in for the first time, don't don't understand the connection with, say, World War II. Well, they don't know that um, Gettysburg is the sister city of St. Mary Gleese in North mm-hmm. France. President Eisenhower lived here, you know, and he was a big figure in World War II. Yeah. And we had, we actually used our battlefield as a Nazi or a German POW camp during yeah. World War II. And there's also the history with World War One with Camp Colt, and then it was a U.S. tank training camp. So a lot of people think that the history ends. I think you said we were talking about that earlier, July Fourth, eighteen sixty-three. But there's a lot more to Gettysburg than just the Civil War, and I interpret Absolutely. a lot of that because that's where my interest is. Sure, and and the Civil War stuff that you have is very interesting. But my favorite room, you remember what my favorite room is? Do you remember? Um, no, probably not. Okay, because <laughs> he doesn't. He, he didn't think about me until this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't thought about me in years. Uh, my favorite room is the JFK room. All the, okay. uh, it's yeah. two rooms, right? With JFK stuff? No, it's one. It's yeah. one? Okay. Because yeah. yeah. you had two for a while. For a while, yep. Talk about some of the stuff that you have in there. Well, in the JFK room, we have one of his suits that he wore between 1955 and 1960. We have um, a lot of personal items, some, some of his... Uh, uh, like his, his grooming kit from from the White House and lots of paper items, a lot of things with uh, documents and, and stuff. Yeah, and and you know we have a piece of the the leather from the limousine where he was killed with his blood on it. Yeah, so we have a lot of assassination related items. People tend to really be interested and fascinated with the JFK assassination. A lot of people that come in the museum are that age, you know, where they remember it. Yeah. Uh, the, the older crowd, as you would say, and, and oh, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. <laughs> but, but, I older mean, than us. A, a, a little bit older than us. and uh, The more experienced crowd. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and we would have people that would say, oh, you know, I remember when Kennedy was killed, and, and we actually um, started a log book so people could record their memories of that, and we've had people that huh. actually were at the funeral. We had someone who was in Dallas when it happened wow. and they wrote down you know what, what their their interpretation of that that's a great idea yeah it's it a good idea yeah, yeah. I, I love that room uh, for a while I remember you had some of Jack Ruby's stuff oh yeah we still have you it you still have that yeah. in there yeah and that was pretty neat because like he there's like doodles that he did I guess it was in jail was yeah. it in jail of like Jackie like her fate like he drew her yeah and there, there's the um, geometric doodles that he did all the time yeah uh, those are really interesting and it kind of you know is a little glimpse into his mind and you know we have the suit that he wore to his trial one of several I'm sure but um, and uh, you know we, we have some things from his nightclub the carousel club some of his business cards we actually have a a uh, contract from one of the women that worked at his club. Her name was Buttercup. Buttercup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so in case you don't know, Jack Ruby owned a nightclub and and he had burlesque dancers there. The Carousel Club, right? Yes, yeah. Correct. Yeah. I'm I'm currently listening on Audible to a book called Case Closed by uh, Gerald Posner. Oh, yes. I'm familiar uh, with that book. Ruby was a nut. <laughs> and so was Oswald. And uh, I believe uh, that they just did their own thing. Like, I used to be a conspiracy theorist guy, but now I'm like, no. Oswald was a a loser and a nut, and uh, Ruby was also a nut. Well, I I think a lot of that has to do with what book you just read, you know, because my mind has changed several times on that topic. So where are you now? I'm at Gerald Posner's book right now, too. Okay, so you're with me that it was he was alone. Yeah, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Well, whatever. It's, <laughs> who cares? Uh, all right. And so how did you guys get the idea to do uh, American Artifacts? So after... After we went and 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 filmed, you know that that first run on on History Traveler with those with those four episodes that we did, um, you know we we stayed in contact with each other and um, I I sent him a text or a call I can't remember exactly which and I said dude you need a YouTube channel mm-hmm. like you you could legitimately have just a YouTube channel dedicated to just this museum showing all of the different artifacts. I said, I happen to know a guy who is uh, decent with a camera and and can edit a, a little bit, uh, you know, if you wanted to do that. So, so the conversation kind of continued from there. Um, he, yeah, Eric got a really good response from from those four videos that came out. Uh, you know, generated a lot of interest. You know, people were coming to the museum, which, which is encouraging to me because it means that, you know, um, it's always encouraging to me to see people getting into history and getting exciting about it, getting excited about mm-hmm. it. So anyway, um, then through you know just multiple conversations, um, we decided that rather than starting a whole new YouTube channel from scratch, uh, we we would just integrate it into the history underground, which kind of is what I was wanting to do whenever I first started the channel to begin with. So I, I've caused a lot of confusion on my channel, which I'm I'm really good at. Um, <laughs> So the the history underground was designed to be a channel that had multiple series. In yeah. It. Uh, so there was one called Echoes of War, um, where I had like uncut interviews with World War II veterans, and and those are there, there's a few episodes of that on there. Um, and then there was History Traveler, and then I've had other ideas, you know, going through my head. But you're uh, but you're the one that's hosting all of those. Is that um, what it is? So, so on the Echoes of War one, it's it's not me at all. You can hear me in the background, like asking questions right. and everything like that. Uh, the the History Traveler series ended up just kind of dominating the the channel. Right. Uh, so, so this is going to offer something that is is a little bit fresh. Um, it, it's going to be different. His his museum is just so stinking insane. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I, I I love it because I, I'll go through different periods where, you know, I'll go through like a World War II period uh, and then I'll and then I'll go into World War One and I'll yeah. really dive into that. And then I might, you know, attach myself to, to something else. And and going through that museum, you kind of get a taste for all of those different things in, in history, which I really like. And the artifacts are, are so unique and it's stuff you're not going to see anywhere else um, that I, I think I think it resonates with people whenever there's an object that you can see. Uh, and that that connects you with you know this period in history, right? Uh, and and I agree, you're right. I, you brought some items with you, right? I did, but um, I I just want to um, tell you another thing that happened right around that time that's pretty important. Sure. Um, you know, I had been thinking about doing a YouTube channel for a while, but I, I don't really have the you know the technical skills to do so. Right. But one of the things that happened was, you know, I, I have a huge Facebook page. And check it out. We do a lot of posts in Gettysburg Museum of History on Facebook. And I have about 140,000 followers, which is pretty big. Pretty sweet. Yeah, I think on it's, Facebook? Yeah. I thought they limited it 5,000. That, that's a personal, but mine's a like page. Ah, so I didn't not many know likes. that. And, okay. and the museum page. Yes. Yeah, and, and um, I think it's more than the Gettysburg National Military part, but I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, they are probably, probably caught up by now. But but what it, what had happened was, um, over the last couple years, I've had some issues with Facebook because of the World War II imagery. You know, um, they oh. have a problem with that. And also uh, some war imagery. You know, they, they would just, like, take posts down. And, and what happened was my, my pay, Facebook, Facebook page got taken down right around the time we filmed those videos. And I woke up one morning, I went to go log in and my page was gone. Every post I've ever done was gone. And uh, it was crazy. And, you know, I I got some attorneys involved and they contacted Facebook's lawyers and we we got it ironed out. And one day it was back up and everything was back up. But still, you got to watch what you post on Facebook because they don't take context into into consideration at all. Right. You know, so if I post something, a story about a World War II German item that was captured by an American soldier. You know, I'm in danger. With YouTube, they do take context into consideration. Of course, they're not going to let you put hateful things up, but if you're doing a World War II documentary sure. post, they're okay with that. No, there's and, tons and, of documentaries about Hitler and the Nazis on yeah, YouTube, but and, they're legitimate uh, documentaries. Exactly, yeah. and that's what that's what I'm doing, you know, and um, they finally recognized that. And the other thing that happened was... Um, when 
when these videos started to come out, people started coming in my museum who and 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 basically I thought from having a following like that on Facebook and some of the History Channel TV shows I've done that I that most people knew about me, you know, but JD has a whole different audience <laughs> yes. of serious history people who may not watch TV or I don't know what it is, but there were all these people coming in saying, "I didn't know about this place. This is wonderful." Yeah. So he has tapped into a, a a different audience and basically an audience who is a appreciative of history. Yeah. I had all these people saying, wow, we love what you're doing. We love what he's doing. And and it was really refreshing because a year ago, um, you know, I thought maybe my career may be coming to an end soon with the way things were happening in our country. You know, there were, our country was burning down and they were taking monuments down and there seemed to be a very anti-history vibe mm. going on everywhere. Yeah, even sure. here. Even yeah, in oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which was shocking. And, and you know, he, to see all these people who he has reached and they 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 appreciate it it, it was it was really refreshing for me yeah. i told him it was like a historical spiritual awakening <laughs> to, to connect with people sure. who, who aren't just on your facebook page bashing you but actually saying this is really cool this is really interesting yep. we like what you're doing and it was great and and you and let's see you started going on the history channel what about 10 or so years ago right correct yeah about and 10 years ago so that's kind of that wave is starting to dissipate and then just as you're starting to think oh this well is, i, I this stopped is it. doing boom he comes in <laughs> yeah exactly I, I stopped doing some of the shows because um well, you know, I did Pawn Stars. I did 13 episodes. And, um, you, you know, they're, they're real. Everybody thinks it's fake. It's it's not real. Um, I, I came on as a reoccurring seller and I sold a couple items in the first year. I, I was So they actually them. buy them from you. When yeah. you come to the deal, yeah. they actually will buy it from you. Yeah. And the first year I did really well. And the second year, they didn't buy anything. They were low balling. So I, I just decided, you know, it's not really a fit for me. And I turned down an expert role originally on there because of American Museum and I was under an exclusivity with them. So um, I kind of dropped the ball with them and that, that's the more desirable role sure. is to be the expert instead of the guy selling stuff because then they cast you as a non-expert. Right. And unfortunately you have to go up with their so-called experts and sometimes that's a little tough you yeah. know, um, when they don't know. You gotta that, like bite your lip. A and, little bit, yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and, and you know, and then if, if they decide they don't like an item, you know, they, it gives you to kiss of death, basically. Sure. You know? So it's it's not good. But yeah, you, you talked about bringing some items in. Um, yeah. I can certainly show you a couple items. Yeah, let's see them. Yeah, well. Um, uh, you got to get your gloves on, ladies that's and right. gentlemen. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Got to get gloves on so that, uh, well, why do you have to wear gloves, Eric? Tell us why. <laughs> so people don't yell at you. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's to keep from getting uh, hate mail and <laughs> getting called out and getting emails from people. And, no, no, it's 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 to protect the items. You know, it's it's just one of those things that we do. Yeah. Um, and they're very awkward, and so it's taking me long. Well, than well I here, let me let me talk about this while you're uh, doing that there, right. uh, okay? Because this is. Uh, this is a new book that Eric put out with uh, Jared Frederick, who I also know. I also know Jared. Uh, Hang tough. Can you see this here? You got the, uh, you got the color. Yeah, you don't need me showing it there. But this is about. Uh, this is the letters, the World War II letters and artifacts of Major Dick Winters, who, uh, of course, is the main character basically in uh, the uh, series Band of Brothers. Um, really cool guy, right? You met him? No, I, I never. Oh, met you never Major met Winters. Him. Nope. Nope. I, I, so how did you get doing this? Well, um, we don't obtained, worry. We're going to get to the artifacts, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we obtained some of the artifacts of Major Dick Winters back in 2016. And among those items were his files and his photo albums. And in those files were letters. He corresponded with a Navy wave um, named Dieta. And he wrote to her all through World War II from oh. actually from before World War II. He was actually in the Army when Pearl Harbor was bombed. And he was actually out on a date with her when Pearl Harbor was bombed. They went horseback riding on December 7th, 1941. Really? And, and um, so so he wrote to her often, and, and I, I don't think it was anything more than a pen pal situation. You know, they never really were that romantic. Sure. Um, but they were fantastic, and it was a whole different side of Dick Winters than we're used to seeing. You know, where the, the other papers and the other writings I had in, in the files were... Um, you know, very business like the officer, sure. and military talk, and 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 he comes off as being a very um, 
all business kind of guy. And, and these letters have, you know, uh, real emotion in them. And, and, and it's a whole different side. So I decided I had to do something with these letters. Is he a romantic you know? guy? Not really. Like I said, it's more okay. of a pen pal situation. It was disappointing. <laughs> yeah. I was hoping you would say yes. <laughs> but but, he, but he's funny. Uh-huh. And, and that's something that we don't normally see. Right. And, and he, he banters with her back and forth. And uh, it, it's it's it, it was really fantastic. And, of course, we have the artifacts. So in the book, we also have a color section in the middle that has a bunch of the artifacts like this that I'm going to show oh, you right now. Perfect segue into the artifact. Good <laughs> the job. The book is great because it has awesome pictures for people like us. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> is it a picture book? Okay, let's see. Let's so see. this is Dick Winter's 1911. Mm. And he ca- carried that all through World War II, except for on D-Day, because he had gotten another one. And he, if you're familiar with the Band of Brothers story, he lost his equipment on D-Day. So he left this in his footlocker. He had a second right. 1911 that he lost. And then he used this from um, about the, mm, uh, somewhere later in the ca- Normandy car- uh, campaign Till the end of the war, and he brought this one home. So this is the one he had through most of World War II, <laughs> except for D-Day. That's so cool, and uh, it's one of my favorite things. And just think that he had this and all those, yeah, incredible times. Um, it's interesting. Uh, pull that up a bit so that the people can uh, okay. see it there. Yeah, you're a little low. Okay, perfect. Yeah, nice. So turn it around a bit. Show it off. Show it off for the camera. Look at that. I offered him 200 bucks for it, but he wouldn't take it. Bucks. <laughs> I know him well enough to know that he would have laughed at that or spit in your eye. So we talked about the book and and um, it's available on Amazon, of course, and it's available on our website, GettysburgMuseumOfHistory.com. But the thing you can't get on Amazon is the special edition. And the special edition is basically the same book, but it has a book plate that is signed by Brad Freeman of mm. Easy Company. Now, mm. he is the last living enlisted soldier from That's Easy it. Company, and he wrote the forward to our book. So he's one of the last guys that ever served with major winners. And it wow. also comes with a piece of D-Day parachute that was actually used on D-Day. No kidding. That's for real? Yep. Yeah, it's a real deal. Yep. Wow. And so that's available on our website. We have and a few And you signed left. it. Yes, that's my COA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So these left. are available on the website. There's a few left. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's just a really neat piece. And I was really happy that Mr. Freeman agreed to do the book. And um, his foreword is really interesting, too. And he... Mr. Freeman, um, I, I had the pleasure of touring Europe with him twice in 2017 and 2018, and he loved Major Winters. He speaks highly of him, and and um, the the forward reflects that. So, uh, and he's the last surviving member of Easy Company. He is the last enlisted man. So there's one other Easy Company member who's alive. His name is Ed Shames, and he was an officer. Okay. Um, now, so. Eric, you've got this museum. How long have you had the museum for? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. and But you've been collecting and trading or selling things for most of your life, right? Or all of your life? Yeah. Um, I, I started collecting when I was about five years old. And my ancestors owned Ziegler's Grove. And Out so, here on the battlefield of yes, Gettysburg, yes. which is by the Bryan Farm now if exactly. you go on the battlefield. Exactly. Okay. And, and they actually were... They, they were tenant farmers during the battle, so they were near uh, the Eisenhower farm in that area. We don't know exactly where it is because we couldn't really research the tax records because they were What was their farmers. name? Peffer. Peffer. Yeah. Okay. And so in 1865 or 1866, right around there, they moved to Ziegler's Grove and they rented the David Ziegler farm from him and eventually they bought it. And so I had all these relics that they found and I grew up playing with relics and that was my thing, you know, the objects and I'll bring out another Oh, interesting what a coincidence. <laughs> I had no idea when I asked this question. Question. <laughs> so this is a Colt Army revolver, um, okay. and this was found on the table at the Peffer farm, the one that was near the Eisenhower farm, uh, because the Peffer family fled like most farmers. They had some horses, and the Confederates were taking horses, you know, and they the people had heard sure. that. So they gathered their, their horses, and they hightailed it out of town. When they came home, this revolver was on their kitchen table and so my grandfather had this when i was a kid and you know as a five six year old kid i would look at this revolver and think <laughs> just drool 
a Civil War soldier had this. Yeah. And, and, and that's what I that's how I connected. I always say different people connect with history in different ways. Some right. people reenact. Some people collect artifacts. Some people read books. Some people become tour guides. But I connected with the objects. And, you know, this is one of my favorite things. I mean, this is probably what started me more than anything is the fascination with this. And that is, that's in such great shape, too. I mean, it's been well taken care of. Yeah, they they kept it nice. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It was in my grandfather's <laughs> den for, you know, 21 years until I got it. So Now, where was, okay, so you said your family lived in what house? Ziegler's house? Um, it, it was, yeah, the David Ziegler farm. And that no longer stands, those buildings, right? right? Um, the, the park took it through eminent domain around 1903 or um, I might not have okay. that date. Early right. 1900s. Early 1900s. And after they obtained the property, they knocked the barn down and stuff. And then they moved the one house and there's pictures of that. And so, um, you know, they didn't preserve things as much as they do now. Right. You know, so um, kind of like the Forney farm. Yeah, I was just going to say, that's happened. exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, so that's no longer there. Was it where the parking lot is now? Or well, there, there's that modern day entrance to the park that goes up to Ziegler's Grove from the Emmitsburg Road. But basically, it's across from Pickett's Buffet and and gotcha right, right on right, the Emmitsburg Road. Yeah. Okay, yeah. gotcha. So okay, so in the series, then yeah. American artifacts, you're going to feature specific artifacts uh, with the stories and everything like that. Can you give us a little tease as to what you shot today? Maybe just a couple that yeah, you shot sure. today. Um, probably. Okay. So the, the first one the, that stands out to me, um, I, I, I always, I, I, World War II is my home base. I always end up coming back to World War II. Um, yeah. Cause you you've been spending a lot of time in our turf here. Right now. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. <laughs> uh, so there was, there was a, a, a whole bunch of, uh, helmets that, that Eric has in his collection, okay. uh, that, that men brought back from World War II. So it's their, their German helmets that they they decorated um so oh yeah yeah, yeah. so so there's yeah, yeah. there's one helmet in particular uh where a, a guy lists um I, I i can't remember wow this is this is terrible um that it i can't even remember what i shot today uh <laughs> what, 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 what did he shoot eric with all the names what, were those people that were wounded from his platoon yeah i think or? they were casualties of okay. 29th division okay so so it, it lists like names of, mm -hmm. of people that, that he fought with. Um, you know, there's another, you know, set of helmets uh, where guys wrote down all of the cities that they went to. Mm. And, and to me, that was that was the most fascinating because yeah. you kind of get this intersection of history and art. And, and the 29th Division, I believe Route 29 down in Virginia is uh, the 29th Division Memorial Highway or something like that, or yeah. at least it used to be. They okay. were originally a National Guard unit, and, and it was the blue and gray, so there were some men from Maryland and Virginia, and their symbol is almost like a yin-yang, and it has part of its blue and part of its gray, and I guess they considered Maryland blue, you know, because they never yeah. really seceded. But, you know, but, but, yeah, it was the blue and gray division, and it was originally that National Guard unit from that area, and then when they activated, there was men from there and other areas as well well um what else what's another one um so whenever we we haven't filmed this yet but i'll, I'll just give a tease for it um we'll, we'll be filming probably in the next couple of days but anyway uh in, in that first run of episodes that we we did on history traveler the the artifact that probably got the the most response from people or that I heard about most from people uh, was an x-ray that was taken of Adolf Hitler's skull. Uh, or, well, it wasn't his skull. It, it, was, a, it was a dental x-ray that was taken in 1944. Um, and uh, there, there are a lot of people who uh, are convinced that Hitler uh, did not die in oh, the Führer yeah. bunker in Berlin and that he escaped to Argentina. Right. So, so we're going to revisit that and... Uh, you know, I, you're going to solve it. We're, we're going to solve it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be taken care it's of. It's about time somebody <laughs> solved that mystery. Yeah. But I, to to be fair, I, I didn't do a great job in that episode oh. explaining exactly what that X-ray was. Way uh, to sell it. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I want to come back and offer a little bit more clarity. I didn't say anything that was wrong. Right. I, I just didn't. Um, 
I'll tell you what, the, going through that museum was like drinking from a fire hydrant. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I was like, here, 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 film this, film this, film this, film this, because we had only had a short amount of time. So, so I didn't really get to go into the depth that I really wanted to on a lot of these artifacts. Yeah. Hence the new series. Well, but then they're just going to have to go to the museum to see them and, and everything else that's there. Yeah. Because there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. We had uh, kind of like a, a meet and greet thing yesterday at, at the museum and uh, had had quite a few people show up. And uh, it, w one thing that really encouraged me was um, seeing parents bringing their kids in and, and seeing the kids. It, it wasn't like. A, a stereotypical museum experience with kids where the dad's going in and he's dragging his kids and they're complaining. Like the, the kids were engaged and excited about everything that they were seeing. Um, Good. So yeah. Oh yeah. It's awesome. It's it awesome. amazing. That's, that's, that's why see. the channel exists. Yeah. That's great. Well, let's talk to uh, someone uh, from your adoring public oh. <laughs> um, right now on the phone. 702 area code. You're on the air with JD and Eric. Hi guys. Hey. Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, I'm a big fan of the show. Oh, thanks. Um, especially, like, uh, History Underground, I, I love your channel. Um, I've actually was just got done watching your last video about Cope Hill and Sergeant Lily repairing the flag under fire. Hmm. And yeah. I still can't get over how amazing that is. Yeah. Um, I was an NCO in the military, carried the colors on runs, and thank God we don't have to do that anymore in combat, but... <laughs> Just the thought of that is insane. Yeah, that Cul absolutely insane. Yeah, Culp's Hill is is so uh, undervalued. I think uh, you could say uh, amongst visitors. So, so that's one thing that I was hoping to do with that particular episode and, and some of the others is say, hey, uh, you know, when you come to Gettysburg, yeah, there's Pickett's Charge, yeah, there's a Little Round Top mm, over here on on the right flank. Uh, there were some pretty important things that, that were happening. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed that episode. Where are you from, Caller? Yeah, What's your I name? I would love to go back. Uh, I live in Las Vegas. My name is Bill Willingham. I'm a... You didn't have to give your, uh, yeah, your full I'm name. I'm a huge history fan. Um, awesome. You might... Oh, sorry. It, it's okay. I really don't matter. <laughs> okay, good, um, good. Uh, I had another quick question for you, you gentlemen, just if you guys could. If I'm, I'm actually related to um, General John Bell Hood. Oh, uh, he was actually my great, 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 great grandfather. Awesome. And I'm kind of curious. Do you guys ever know what pistol he used when he was um, commanding? Pistol. That is yeah. an Eric question. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. I've never read that anywhere. No, or I saw never. That or, yeah. I'm trying to think if I. I'm trying to think if I've seen a picture of him with a pistol on. I know there's that one like really tall one I've where tried. You, you've tried. I mean, I, 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 yeah, I tried. Um, yeah, I, the thing is, I ended up with a lot of stuff, right? Um, and I've I probably got about seventeen Civil War pistols. Um, oh wow, pretty decent sized collection, I think. And I'm curious if I actually own his, um, just because it's been passed down. Um, so I was curious if you guys knew because I'm kind of wondering. I, I likely it's unlikely, but do I have it and not know it kind of thing. So wait a minute. Are, um, are you saying? I got saying... a really nice 1860 army. Okay. It's engraved and everything, but it doesn't say his name anywhere. I figured that it would probably had his name on it. D um, so is this gun from your family and passed down and there's a chance yeah. that it may be his? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Is, is that what you it's mean? Probably okay. probably not likely. Okay. Yes. But I do have another grandfather's Civil War pistol, a 51 Navy. Um, and the sad part is, is I only know his first name is John. I don't even know what the guy's yeah. last name. Uh, it's on the wife's side. It's kind of funny how both families have so much civil war ties. But on my father's side, I'm related to John Bell Hood. And I actually ended up with a lot of guns because all my grandfather's a huge guns guy. Uh, lots of single action armies, and, you know, through the, the cowboy era. Interesting. And, but a lot of civil war pistols, a lot, 51 Navy, 60 armies. Um, I actually have a uh, Griswold and Gunnison, uh, which is kind of cool. Wow. One of the few people I've ever met with one of those. Um, but and that actually brings me to another question I had for. Well, wait, I got a question uh, for you. I got a question for you there. first. I got a question for you. Um, yeah. Being a descendant of Hood, do you think that at Gettysburg, he should have been allowed to go around to the right? <laughs> 
I don't know if I'm qualified enough to say yes or no. <laughs> very um, good. Very good. <laughs> very good answer. Yeah, that would be my best answer for that. Um, and okay. Your next question. Put it in play. Also, I, my next question is, is someone like myself, I'm a curator to the firearms that I have, but I thank God I have a son and I'm hoping to pass those on. But if I ever wanted to put them somewhere for them to be seen, my biggest concern is giving it to a museum and then them just being stuffed away back in the back somewhere and not be seen to people. Um, so if I wanted to have them at a museum, what would be my best chances and best bets? And I'm sure it's probably just contact curators and beg and plead and see if I have anything worthy enough for their front rooms. Like, yeah, I, I what would, would say be your, that, your best suggestion. I would say go to a museum where you can get control and have an agreement with them you know we make agreements with people when they place things on loan and uh you know if it's something that we want for our collections and we'll tell you we'll tell you okay we're going to exhibit this okay we'll take it on loan but it's probably not going to make it to to the showcases so we, we're up front with people so mo you know most good museums okay. will be up front with you so you can find one that will actually exhibit your items and, and, and Eric, tell me, um, okay. I've heard from, I forget who, but somebody told me like never donate um, artifacts like this to a local historical society because they're likely to sell it and not display it or take uh, care of it. You know, that, I think that depends on what institution, you know. Right. I'm talking when, small ones, not well, like not like the wonderful Adams County Historical Society that we have here. Yeah, they never like, sell anything. No, they're, 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 they're like, they're yeah. like a real deal. Yeah. yeah. And and when, when items are donated to us, unless we have an agreement to actually, um, you know, sell the items, w we keep them. You know, if you donate to the Gettysburg Museum of History, it stays at the Gettysburg Museum of History. Unless you tell me if you don't need this for your collections and you want to use it to raise money, you know, we, we get all that out front and we are honest about it and we do whatever agreement works for both of us. Very good. You got another caller there, or another question there, caller? Because I got uh, one, two more people that I got to get no, to right that, now. That, that is, that is it. I really appreciate your guys' time and letting me on and talking with you, gentlemen. And uh, once you. again, I'm a huge, huge fan of the the, the History Underground channel. Yeah, um, appreciate that. You're doing amazing work, brother. Thanks. Um, very good. Yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for the call. Um, all right, we're going to go to another caller right now. Uh, let's see. Who have I got here? 417, you're on the air. Yeah. Um, hey, I am another one of those great big uh, psycho fans, uh, literally, of the History Traveler uh, series and the oh, History Underground. And actually, psycho I, and because I, yeah, um, <laughs> I tell you, I found your, your channel by accident. And it's like crack. I can't go to bed. I can't oh like binge watching it. <laughs> it's like I, I need intervention, but I won't accept it. Um, but, and I went and bought the History Traveler t-shirts. Everybody needs those, by the way. Oh, awesome. Thank but you. I, would, I, actually, I actually have a, a, one question for, uh, for J.D. and one for Eric. Um, I was just wondering, um, uh, JD, like how you choose the music you use. Cause like on your videos, the music is always brilliant. Oh, like thank you. it's, it's good music <laughs> and put it at just the right time. You know, it's like so professional. Like, <laughs> and I wondered how you choose that. Cause it's really well done. And then I just wondered how we can, uh, support, uh, the Gettysburg museum since, uh, from your videos, I understand it. There's no admission. So what about people like, I can't afford to travel out there. Probably I'll never get to go out that far away from where I'm at in my life, most likely. But like, do they have like a Patreon sort of account or something where we can donate? I know you do, JD, because I love it. Oh, um, I'm addicted to Patreon too, but. So does addressing um, Gettysburg. But I wondered if there's a way that viewers. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, like we, we can yeah. just like do both. We, we are um, a 501c3 now. And so we are in the, we're currently getting that set up, um, a donation um, button or whatever you would want to say. But for right now, until that is, you know, completely done and taken care of, you could always go to our website and, you know, buy the book Hang Tough or something <laughs> like that. Or, Which um, I just finished reading, by the way. Oh, oh very good. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And, um, yeah, it's so good. It's so entertaining. It was very well written. Great job, dude. Well, thank you. Oh, I'm so thank glad you, you enjoyed and, it. And I have to give a shout out to Jared, too, because he's really, you know, um, he, he really 
put that thing together. You know, um, I, it was a little confusing to me. I, I had never written a book before. So Jared had written several books and, um, you know, he really put it together in a in a way that made sense because mm-hmm. I was a little overwhelmed. And um, yeah, and, and I, I, I want to bring this up too. Um, you know, we Jared and I have written a second book on Ronald Spears, who was one of the other commanders oh, yeah. of Easy Company. And we finished it and it's coming out in May. And um, I am real excited about that book. And it is actually available now on uh, Amazon pre-order. So it, it is available, but it won't really be released till um, next year. But um, and, and Jared and I are also collaborating on a third book where we are going to publish Dick Winter's photo album. So that'll be wow. a big coffee table book. So look for that. And, That's awesome. Um, yeah. And you'll, you'll I thought that maybe you were going to do another book on J.D., Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> that that would be a trifle brochure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, <laughs> now, to uh, to answer your question about about the music. Uh, oh yeah. So so whenever whenever I'm putting an episode together, uh, probably what absorbs the most bandwidth for me and the, and the most time is is trying to find you know the the what feels to me uh to be the the right song to go with whatever subject matter um that that i'm that i'm addressing where do you get it from uh so there there's several different resources that i draw from online uh you know royalty free yeah so kevin I, mcleod you use kevin mcleod at all in Compitech? no okay that's pretty good stuff oh go okay uh, yeah i was unfamiliar with that one yeah uh, so, so really, what I, what I'm trying to do is uh, trying to gauge, I guess, what what emotion the place that I'm at is is pulling from me, and then finding the music that that matches up to that. Right. Uh, and I've I've had some people who have complained about the music where they say, you know, oh, you can't win them all. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. Where, where they they tell me that no, I should they're have. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've heard people. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard people say you should have no. <laughs> No music at all, uh, and and don't show your face. Really? Uh, so, <laughs> so the, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I, you know, I get it. You know, different people have different tastes, and uh, the music's not going to appeal to everybody. Uh, my no, I, my I thought, face. I, sure I agree with the caller, though. I think that the the music uh, is good. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Because it, yeah. finding the right music and placing it properly is not an easy thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a it's an art, and yeah. and you do it well. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Thank you for the call. What's your name? Uh, my name is Lisa. All right, Lisa. I'm in Springfield, Missouri. Missouri. Oh, oh, awesome. is that your neck of the woods, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Wow, pretty close. All right. Well, uh, I hope you don't stalk. Uh, JD, <laughs> but uh, thank you very no. much. <laughs> no, but if they see him around town, I'll be wearing my history travel t-shirt. Well, there you go. Awesome. Very good. I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the call and uh, <laughs> have a good night. Thank you. Uh, okay, so let's see. we got another person who's been sitting here in the queue for 10 minutes, so we're going to get that person on uh, 678. You're on the air. Uh, hello, gentlemen. I just want to uh, give you something that I think can connect Gettysburg and Easy Company. Okay, go ahead. So JD, the next time, JD, the next time you make a trip to Tacoa and Currahee, yeah, make a side trip. To, make a side trip to Gainesville, Georgia, and visit a couple of sites related to James Longstreet. I that is on my trip. list. Oh, okay, very yeah. good. Well, you're you're ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm be, definitely. Be sure you. Yeah, be sure you visit not just the grave site, but the uh, Piedmont Hotel. What's left of the Piedmont mm. Hotel? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know I about that. That's that, that is the hotel that James Longstreet owned at the time of his death. Oh. And what you will what you will find there is what remains of the hotel. Okay. And I'm not going to. I'm not going to spoil the surprise, but you're going to be surprised by something that you find there. I'll, I'll tell you that to entice you to make the business. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and that really kind of hits on a, a good point. Man, I have found, uh, well, not found, but I, I've been introduced to so many 
amazing places from people sending me messages and saying, hey, if you're ever in Virginia, you know, in this area, you mm. should check this out mm. or check that out. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's been that's been great, too. It's called the Piedmont Hotel. The Piedmont Hotel. That's okay. right. It's on uh, it's on Maple Street. It's in a section of town that's basically uh, light industrial now. OK. All right. Yeah. There's a decent chance but I'll be. It, it, uh, there's there's a decent chance I'll be back down in the Tacoa area um, next June early um, because I, I think I'm slotted to be a, a guest speaker at uh, at Camp uh, Camp Tacoa there at Curahee. So very nice, very nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, you, you you might also James Longstreet's old farm is in Gainesville too. Okay, and there's a. Uh, there's a, a subdivision was developed there back in the 50s and 60s. It's called Longstreet Hills. Interesting. So you might want to you might want to ask about that when you're visiting Gainesville. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you very much for the call, the, sir. The pay- no, you're go ahead. welcome. Yeah, go ahead. You can finish that thought. Oh, okay. The, the Piedmont Hotel, what's left of the Piedmont, it's now it's a, a visitor center now for for General Longstreet, and there's a a group here in Gainesville is called the Long Street Society, mm. and they were started to basically to restore what was remaining from the old Piedmont Hotel and to commemorate James Long Street because he, you know, he retired here to Gainesville and, and, and died here and, and is buried in Gainesville. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you very much for the call. <laughs> Now he's got me wondering. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. Now he's got me wondering what is it that he's not telling me. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, making me want to go down there earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh man, we got a good number of calls here. So let's see. Uh, Nine seven zero. You're on the air. <laughs> Hello, this is Mike from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Oh God. <laughs> and um, I have a few a few questions here. Okay, Mike. Uh, one for is Eric. It six. Uh, first of all, <laughs> was that? Is it six questions? I guess it's six questions. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Questions. <laughs> That's his nickname. But it's not. Yeah. It's not going to be six questions. Oh. Okay. It's, oh, uh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Ask. But it. Um, Eric, I I went to your museum on my birthday, and first of all, I was going in there because I went to the Heritage mu- uh, Center where you were given a talk about the book. I went. Okay, I'll stop in in that museum for a couple of minutes. Nope. You could spend <laughs> hours there and not even hit the first section alone. It is a tremendous museum. So, Eric, where exactly in Gettysburg is your museum located? Uh, 219 Baltimore Street. <laughs> How are you in there if you don't know where it's located, Mike? Well, what I'm doing is, is because I'm... <laughs> What I want to do is for people who are not aware of where it is. Oh, I yeah, want thank them you. to know where they can well, go to when they visit Gettysburg. Yeah. I was going to tell them that at the end of the, the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get there at the end, buddy. Okay, but go ahead. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to interrupt you real quick. For, for people from the who watch the History Underground who are, are watching this or listening, uh, my, Mike is a friend of the show. Yes, uh, he's a friend of addressing Gettysburg. So. <laughs> Yeah. And and we have a rapport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike, we so, do. Um, yeah. and, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Oh, and for JD, I have a question here. Sure. Um, what attracts you to Gettysburg? I think my question is why Gettysburg. What is it about the place? Uh, you know, that's that my bag, baby. Over and over again? <laughs> what do you? What's with the why Gettysburg <laughs> thing? That's you know, that's my thing. Go ahead. Why? So, I said, Mike. Hey, yeah. hey, JD. Why Gettysburg? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I the the reason that that I came to Gettysburg and ended up doing this this giant series was was mainly uh, I had so many requests from people saying, "When are you going to Gettysburg? When are you going to do Gettysburg?" I, I kept getting that question over and over and over. Uh, my intention was to never come to Gettysburg and, and for for the, the History Traveler series uh, because they're. There have been so many, and the re- it's not because I don't like Gettysburg. I, I love the battle. I love studying it and you know, everything like that. My concern was that it is like the battle of the Civil War. Like people who don't even know anything about the Civil War know Gettysburg. Mm. Um, and it's been so mm. well researched and so well covered and, and has been um, has has been handled by people so more capable than me that I didn't think I had anything to add to it. 
Um, so, so I, mm. I really wanted to stay away from it because I thought, man, if I even try to touch Gettysburg, I'm going to get torched by <laughs> the, the the Gettysburg <laughs> enthusiasts. Um, I, I've oh. been I've been pleasantly surprised by by the response though. Uh, that, but that you're I've not been. you're not doing it in a way where you're presenting yourself as the expert. So I mean, yeah. who's going? Why are they going to torch you for that? Well, that's what am I talking about? They torch everybody. Let me introduce you to the. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot what we were talking yeah, about for but, a second. But here. really, you know, I, I look at stuff like with the American Battlefield Trust, and uh, you know, so many other uh, other production companies and things like that who, who have tackled Gettysburg and all the documentaries out there. And I thought there, there's nothing really that I can add to this uh, that, that is going to be meaningful. Do you remember what I told you when you were on the live show a few weeks ago or a month ago, whenever that was? Yeah. Remember when I told you when you said this? Yeah. What did I say? That... <laughs> It, you, you just uh, I'll say, say it because it sounds it sounds jerky coming from you. Um, it's not that it's not about the subject. It's about you doing the subject. People follow you, uh, Lisa, on the phone. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, she's got a wall with posters of you all over the place, and she lights candles in front of it and everything. Okay, she loves you. Uh, people want to see you show them Gettysburg. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's kind and of what I And then now hope. they will come and listen to addressing Gettysburg, show them Gettysburg from oh. Gettysburg. <laughs> I hope so. You know, yeah, and save you the money from having to travel up here. Go ahead, <laughs> you're saying. No, I, I, that's that's kind of what I've always hoped, um, you know, with the the History Traveler series, is that is that it feels like, you know, you're kind of walking along with some guy you know. Right. That, that knows a little bit about where he's going and you're kind of discovering stuff together. So a lot of times whenever you see me, you know, show something and I'm like, dang, or wow, or cool, or you know, whatever. like I'm seeing it for the first time. So you're, you're experiencing it right along with mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, now, now for the Gettysburg series, I, I, mm -hmm. I did do, uh, I tried to do a, a lot of research preparing for it and, you know, read a lot, listened to a lot of podcasts, um, you know, watched a lot of the American Battlefield Trust stuff uh, because I, I really didn't, I desperately didn't want to look like any more of a moron than what I already am. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, Mike, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. That, that's that's why I ended up coming Hello. here was mainly because the, there were so many people who who were requesting it. You got one more, Mike? Well, thank you, thank you so much. That's all I have. Today. All right, so, thank, thank you very you so much, much, Mike. Thank yeah. you for calling in. It's nice Thanks, to hear man. a friendly voice, buddy. Uh, okay, seven five seven. You are on the air. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Uh, first, I just want to say I'm a big fan of the History Underground channel. I've been uh, watching it and been really interested in the Gettysburg stuff. Uh, I awesome. got my t-shirt. And uh, I also wanted to ask you questions, if that's okay. Sure. So first one for you, J.D. I just was wondering if you're going to visit any more uh, Civil War battle sites. Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, you know, this summer. So I filmed the bulk of the Gettysburg stuff in March. I came back in June and I only filmed a few things whenever I was here in June. Um, but I was here for, for other reasons. Um, so after this Gettysburg series wraps up, uh, which, you know, I was originally afraid to do the Gettysburg series. And now I'm afraid that when it ends, uh, people are going to be like, well, done with you. Uh, you know, it's not Gettysburg, so we don't care anymore. <laughs> no, uh, no, no. But uh, I, I went uh, along the um, area around um, Gulf Shores, Alabama, uh, and, and hit some Civil War sites uh, around there. Um also hit a few World War II sites uh, in, in that area. So so that's a, a long answer to an easy question. The, the answer is yes. Uh, definitely going to be tackling some, yeah, some more Civil War stuff uh, in the future. It's it's uh, an endless well to draw from. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What else, sir? All right, so is it okay if, is it okay if I ask one more? Of course. Yeah, sure. All right, this one's for Eric. I was just wondering, um, I'm going to try to, I live in New York City and, you know, it's kind of a, Trip to go to your museum. So I was just wondering, like, do you, is there like anything else you recommend I do in Gettysburg, like other than go to your museum? 
uh, no. in like the battle. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's other great places to go. Um, you know, right down the street from me is Ron Palms Museum of yes. Civil War Images. Fantastic museum. He's going to be on the show on Thursday this week oh, great. or Friday. Yeah, there, there, there's lots to do here. And, and um, I'm sure once you get here, you'll be able to check out all kinds of other things. You know what else you could do is um, there's a uh, how old are you? Uh, 18. 18, yeah, you sound young. If uh, if you want to really experience the battlefield, there's a business called Getty's Bike Tours. You can go to gettysbike.com, and uh, right. you can make the, the arrangements there. Um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it's a bike tour, but, like, you're out there, and you can really feel the land, and you got the wind in your face, and it's great. It's uh, the best way to do it, if you're able. So that that's what I would recommend. That's sweet. Uh Thank you so much for uh, answering. Sure. You're welcome. That's it? You, yeah, no other you. questions? That's it. All right. All you right. have yourself a good night. Appreciate it. You too. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Uh, okay. 248. You are on the air in one second. I just got to press the button. There you are. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I don't want to drop the call. Sorry. I pressed the wrong button there again. Okay. 248. You're on the air. Hello. 248. Okay, they're not there. Change their mind. Sorry, sorry. You snooze, you lose. So I'm going, you know what? I'm going to put you back in the queue and I'm going to come back to you later. Um, let's see. Let's go to 513. You are also now on the air. 513, that must be me. That Hello. is you. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm very nervous. No, I'm don't sorry. be nervous. Oh, great. No, no, very, no. very nervous. <laughs> I wrote down my questions just so I don't, you know, come off like a complete idiot. I've been giving myself a little pep talk ever since. Like, okay, don't make a fool. Come on. We've been talking don't this whole time without yourself, writing anything but... down. So <laughs> you can do it. What, what's I your, know, right? What's and, your well, name? I mean, I, I kind of feel, my name's Pamela and I'm Pamela. from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Pamela from Cincinnati. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I was going to say, I feel silly because I watch JD all the time because, and I do kind of feel like we, obviously we don't know each other, but yeah. you know, watching him very comfortable. I should be able to sure. say, Hey JD, it's cool. Oh, but yeah, it's, exactly. And he'll yeah, be like, no, hi Pamela. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and just, I mean, with all your self deprecation, JD, that's why we follow you because you're so bloody relatable. You oh, just, you, <laughs> you don't come off like an expert or, you know, I mean, obviously you know what you you're very knowledgeable, but you don't present anything in a way that seems like pretentious or condescending. And it's very, very easy to follow. And my gosh, he just got off the phone with an 18 year old kid. That's fantastic. I've got a son his age and none of my kids are that excited about it. That's, I mean, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Thank but, you. Um, the, yeah, the, the, the one thing. Oh, I'm sorry. The the one thing that I am really no, no, please. the the one thing that I am really good at is not sounding like an expert. <laughs> so I, I do that well. I, see, I don't know about that because I I've learned an awful lot from you. Absolutely, oh, well, you. and presentation is absolutely key. Presentation is key, and you know if you're relatable, then people will watch definitely. And Pamela, um, may, may and I yeah, say and something? You guys don't have all night. May I say something to you, Please. Pamela? Uh, you sound like you are barely over 18 yourself. You sound very young. How could you have uh, children that age? Oh, my gosh. I will take that as such a high compliment. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, a lady never, ever gives her age. I didn't ask your age. A, um, <laughs> very, very distant memory. Very distant <laughs> memory. That's okay. <laughs> I'll take it. And, Eric, I look so forward to visiting your museum. Uh, as a true Midwesterner, we just hop in the car and drive. So, you All know, right. a few hours away is no big deal. So, yeah, as soon awesome. as it's safe. And I come, and I'm going to have to remind you of this conversation, and you'll be like, whatever. But it's just, you know, <laughs> fun. But it definitely, definitely. And Mr. Justin Gettysburg, I just found your channel, and I cannot wait to check out your content and see what else you have to teach me. Well, I appreciate that. Too. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you find me just as self-deprecating as JD. <laughs> I have no doubt I will. I try to, I'm have the same self-deprecating dark sense yes, of humor. It's exactly. quite all right. Nobody you know, hates me more than I do. And what else is there? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm so good at that. It's yes. Exactly. See, we'd all get along so well. We would. Hey, listen, when <laughs> anyway. you come to Gettysburg and go to Eric's anyway. Museum, let us all know and we'll go together and get a beer or something, okay? That sounds fantastic. I will take you up on that. I all will right. absolutely take you up I on that. I actually will remember. Definitely. All right. 
Okay. So, does really? she have a question? Fantastic. Was that the question? I will. Was that the question? I do. I have a couple. Okay. Right. Yeah, sure. Oh, oh. Yes, I, do. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I like wrote them down and everything. No, no, no. I'm not a talker. You Matt, gotta shut Matt me was, up. Matt, I just Matt was getting fight. ready to hang up on you. I was getting ready to hang up on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is no time. <laughs> It's okay. Apologies. All right. All right. So go ahead. Okay. Pamela. In that particular, I'll just get it down to one question then, and I will get it to Mr. Justin Gettysburg. There is there are there any particular narratives about Gettysburg that you just absolutely hate? Any um, Ooh, any uh, I don't know any rumors, any stories, and I know that's such a big oh, question. Oh, okay. But I mean, okay, no, you said you on, said you, you know, said the word narrative, and my producer and I perked up because we do narrative episodes. And then when you said that you absolutely hate, I was going to say, okay, well, I hate those. I hate the ones that I do. So I was going to name my own episodes. <laughs> but you're talking you about what do you do? <laughs> because so, like, nobody hates me more than me. That are out we, there, like okay, it, fair enough. We did cover that. Yeah, we did. Cover that I'm, I, I'm alluding go ahead Eric. yeah can i steal this question sure uh i i would Please. say i would say anything oh man i'm going to draw the hatred of a lot of people whenever i say this <laughs> anything that has to do anything that has to, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, anything that has to do with Gettysburg being haunted. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. I, I am. Agreed. So Agreed. I, I have a funny story that <laughs> goes along. Like anytime I post a Civil War video, there there are people who will say, uh, you know, did you experience any paranormal activity? Was it was it haunted? Is it, you know, did you feel anything or anything like that? There's no time. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I did a video at Andersonville. Okay. Which was for people who don't know uh, a big prisoner of war camp down in Georgia where a lot of Union troops were held. One of one of the worst places uh, to be during the Civil War. There's one uh, slow motion shot where I'm showing like these big gates. They're like eight or twelve foot tall, and and they're opening up. And I started getting comments from people saying, "Hey, at like the you know I don't know the, the 1323 mark, like look in between the door frame and the door." you legitimately caught like the shadow of a ghost. Somebody says this to you. This is a comment. Yeah, this is a comment on YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, what Oh dear is heck? right, Pamela. So, so I, I was getting multiple comments like this saying, dude, oh, there, there's a ghost. You like captured the image of a ghost. So I go and I, I go up to this, this spot in the video and I look and sure enough, as I'm doing this slow motion shot, as the door is opening in between the door frame and the door, you see the shadow of some figure move by. And it was my son getting in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. I mean, imagine that, the crazy yeah. logical explanation. And look, I mean, and that's not the, now, now hold on, and I'm sure you guys don't mean to either. There's not trying to trample on anybody's beliefs, and I'm not, you know, making fun of anybody, but yeah. I mean, come on, really? I was at Stones River, and, you know, one of my kids that I dragged along was just kind of like, okay, well, we're going to see any ghosts. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. They're like, well, a bunch of people died here. I'm like, okay, let's be a little bit more respectful. These are hallowed grounds, mm. and no, ghosts don't hang around battlefields and just walk around and wait for people to show up so they can beat their drums and yeah. beat their drums. Come on the, the history of Gettysburg it's is not enough. How like, that you, goes. Don't need, you don't need the ghosts. No, that's, um, what, that's what we always say is that the stories no, are horrifying no, enough. Don't. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, Pamela, uh, the, the one that really grinded my gears um, a year or two ago was that uh, new Gettysburg ghost video that came out, which is clearly a droplet of water on the windshield of the car. <laughs> but everybody thinks it's some like squiggly kind of horror movie movie type of ghost moving around in erratic ways. But if you look, you know what I'm talking oh about? My gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to find that. No, I try not to look at that just so it doesn't keep popping up in my feed. But yeah, yeah I think I remember a while well, ago. No, into, amazing. First hand. Yeah. Sign into your I'm friend's account and, and look it up because then it'll pop up in their feed. But like, it, it's, uh, it's really annoying. <laughs> I mean, it made, it made like the New York times or maybe not the New York yeah. times, but yeah. it was like <laughs> major <laughs> news publications were spreading this all over the place place and it's like it's a drop of water <laughs> it's really annoying that that's Fortunate. one thing i don't like the other thing i don't i don't it's not that i i don't really hate any of the narratives what what just kind of like makes my skin crawl and i think eric the producer i think you'll agree with me on these the here what we, the what ifs yes uh what if jackson were here what if hood was allowed to go oh, around to the right um oh. what if 
What if Absolutely. Matt from Addressing Gettysburg had hair? <laughs> you know, all these the Gettysburg. Armchair generaling, if you will. Yeah, and, and it's really like, I don't understand. I guess it's just like a flexing of the muscle in, you know, your brain yeah. muscle that you think you're doing when you do this. I don't know what it is that people, but what ifs to me are such a waste of time. Yeah, they, they are, but I, I like playing with those I alternate do, I history do too. things. Absolutely they're, they're, too. Fun. <laughs> they're fun to do. Well, no, because it's a good way to show how much you understand the battle. Like the what yeah. if Hood was allowed to go around to the right yeah if someone like actually says you know they should have let hood go around to the right man like i know they only watched the movie why so he could be completely cut off from the rest of the <laughs> army crushed by the sixth corps that and was that's, waiting there that's what we say cool. yes because well, he doesn't right he's going to be swallowed up so um yeah, I think they're fun for that reason, yeah. uh, but they but they do kind of bother me because is they, and the what ifs are always they always seem to be someone trying to figure out a way that the South could have won, which is fine except they didn't win. Yeah, and and it's like there's nothing you can do to change that. It is what it is. It's history. Oh, and yeah, except so, it's not fine. Absolutely. <laughs> so here yeah, here's a, a funny one. Oh, oh man, I, I shouldn't have brought this up because I'm I'm gonna it's gonna feel. <laughs> I, I, I try to be a nice guy and I don't want to be to come off sounding rude to the person who left this comment, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. Just don't say their name. OK, I can't. I, I can't remember what exactly. It was. So Gary Edelman and I did a video on on East Cemetery Hill. OK, yeah. so you have Hayes, Louisiana Tigers and uh, Avery's North Carolina Tar Heels that, you know, attack up East Cemetery Hill. Confederates uh, attacking a union position. They occupy it briefly. Union drives them off. Somebody got on there. On, on that video and left a comment and they said if the Confederates would have had modern day comms would have been a completely different story that day and I was like yeah it probably would have been uh, you know assuming that yeah. the Union didn't have access yeah. to the same technology but yes if, if the Confederates would have had modern day comms yeah. and if M4 the Confederates had a nuke and, things yeah, would have been different yeah, it would have been a different yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's it, to me it's fun to play with that kind of stuff <laughs> Pamela can we can we can well, we help you in any other way because with Gary Abelman Oh, no, 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 not at all. Just to point out real quick, it was Gary Edelman. What a waste of time. Of all the questions you could ask that man. I mean, he right. has such a wealth of information. It's, yeah. it's, it's, what a waste of time. I hope you... Kind uh, of funny. What a shame. I hope you uh, enjoy the show that we did with Gary Edelman just a couple of weeks ago. Actually, a week ago, I think it was. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, last Monday. Yeah, Gary's a lot of fun to talk to. Um, and uh, that's about it, Pamela. You got anything else, right? That's okay. it? Don't forget... No, 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 you, thank uh, you guys for letting me take up so much of your time, no, and you. I'm going to take you up on that beer. Yeah, I was just going to say, don't forget, when you're coming to town, let us know about the beer. And uh, that's it. I absolutely won't forget. <laughs> thank you guys so much for your good. time. You guys have a great rest of your night. Yeah, you're good, welcome. Good you talking too. to you. Great talking to you. Uh, all right, let's try to go back to 248, because he's still in the queue here. So let me see. 248, are you there? 248, come in. Ah, nothing. No. Nope. Nothing, 248. Must be in a... Two four eight. Where are you? Wicked dead zone for cell there's signal. No time. Oh, there's two four eight. <laughs> there is no time. It's Robert E. Lee. Hello, hello, oh, oh. hello. Oh, you. There is no time for that. Here he is. Okay, two four eight. You there? You are. <laughs> are you there? No, he just got yelled at. By yeah, hello, machine. <laughs> Hello. This is two four eight. Go ahead. We can, can you hear, hear you. me. We can yeah. hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. I saw I just had another call come in at the exact oh. same time. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there is no time. <laughs> there is no time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is no time. <laughs> what can we do for you, 248? <laughs> well, this, this call is mainly for JD. This is just a shout out. This is uh, Jim from Michigan. Hey, Michigan and, uh, Jim! I just wanted to say, <laughs> I just wanted to say, you're holding on to me, JD. I was there with you in June, and you you didn't emphasize enough the importance of this museum you were going to go to the next day. So. Good job, JD. I, I tried to tell you. <laughs> now I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've 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 already been a customer, and I do have a copy of the book. It awesome. just came oh, the other day, you. so I haven't broken it open yet. And uh, I'm definitely going to go back. And and I've ordered a few things, too. I did want that nice silver tray, but it was a little out of my price. Range. Oh. And it's already gone, I yeah. believe. Well, the silver stuff goes you know pretty quick. One. Yeah, I know which one. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised you put that on there. But uh, anyways, I'm a big fan, as J.D. knows. And uh, 
I'm going to be back down there, so I will stop in, and that's going to be one of my priorities at the museum. So, well, thank you. Plan plan a plan half a day. As far as the podcast, what's that? Half a day? Yeah, I, there's there's a lot <laughs> there, man. <laughs> maybe more, maybe yeah. more. And and addressing Gaz Gaysburg podcast, I just found you guys the other day as well. So I've oh. got a lot of catching up to do. Very nice. Yes, you do. You have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> but enjoy it. I yeah, you'll enjoy, enjoy it. It's good stuff. Yeah, I, I watched the show with uh, Gary Edelman, so that was, oh, that good. was pretty good. Very good, very good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, two four eight. I hope uh, we get to meet you when you come to town sometime. And uh, thanks for the call. Thanks for uh, sticking in there with us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Thank right. you. Same. Have a good night. All right, okay. man. We've got. Thank you, All right. Uh, we're going to let's see. We've got four more calls, and then that's it. That's it. We're going to. Uh, we're all going to fall asleep if we don't. Four four three. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Hello. Yes, 443. Yeah, my name is Dennis. Uh, this is just a shout out to uh, JD and to Eric. Um, I wanted to thank them. I was able to stop by yesterday at the museum, talk to them from Westminster, and uh, couldn't be two nicer guys to, to discuss uh, things with, to take the time and to, to show me stuff and to answer all my questions. Uh, I just highly recommend... Um, your show and and the museum i appreciate it thank, thank you. you so much thank you you're welcome thank you for the appreciate call that. all right, all right. Uh, have a great night you too thank you um okay we're going to go to uh 816 here 816 you should be on the air right now hello 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 Hi. hello how are y'all tonight pretty good how are you I'm wonderful. Uh, my name is Melinda, and uh, my husband and I live with our family in Alabama, and I have um, a question slash asking for advice on a direction that uh, my husband and I are uh, kind of doing some research on. Okay. Okay, so um, we, we do live in Alabama, but my husband's um, um, ancestry roots are from upstate New York and in some ancestry research that he's done, um, he has a distant relative that fought at Culp Hill, was um, uh, injured and, and ended up uh, dying in a, in a, I think a field hospital in Gettysburg. Um, his name was Elijah Ryant and in, upon further research we discovered that his um, gravestone is misspelled. At the Gettysburg Cemetery, um, it's listed, uh, it's it's engraved as Bryant with a B um, at the beginning, and um, we have tried some avenues of maybe how we could get it rectified uh, to be spelled correctly, and kind of to no avail. And we were kind of wondering if you had any advice on a direction for us to go. I, I would uh, show up with a flashlight, a hammer, and a chisel. No, and, uh, no, 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 do not give that advice. That's a joke. <laughs> that's no, a, that's that a is joke. not a joke. You cannot joke about that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. No. People wouldn't take that seriously, would yes, they? Yes, they would, because oh, you're I, saying it, and they they follow you. Don't. <laughs> Don't believe him okay. on that one. So, so believe me on this. That was a joke. I won't. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I understand. Okay. Good. Yeah, I, I don't know on that. He's uh, Private Elijah Ryan from the 137th New York. Elijah Ryan. Yes. Y A N T. Yes. I'm looking at his uh, gravestone now. It, it is, in fact, uh, incorrectly. Is it uh, the 137th? Yeah, 137th Company K of the 137th New York, right there on the right flank on Culp's Hill. Wow. He's, it's basically the uh, 20th Main of Culp's Hill. So the 20th Main was the yeah. last mm -hmm. regiment on the left flank, and the 137th Colonel David Ireland. Ireland, yeah. yeah. That, that is one of my favorite stories yeah. in Gettysburg, and it is so often overlooked. Yep. Yeah. Identical percentage and loss of... Yeah, uh, that is true. Yeah. 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 The the only problem is they didn't have as good a publicist as, as uh, the 20th, 20th Maine. Maine. <laughs> you know, the, the 137th... Well, we, we see one of you. You did a video on the... Uh, J.D., you did a video on the 137th. Yep. Did you not? Yes. Yeah. My, my husband, like, he, he enjoyed watching that. Yeah, that was one of my favorites. I, um, I love that place. So he has he has tried to contact the cemetery. Um, he even contacted uh, the local representative 
of that area to try to maybe even, uh, you know, try that route with one of the legislatures there to get something rolling and his just not been able to make contact with anyone to, to maybe even have a discussion about um, maybe how to rectify the, the spelling of his name. I wonder if Tim Smith would know. Camp. Yeah, I mean, I think Tim would probably say good luck. Yeah, like that's really. exactly what he would okay. say. Yeah. And um, I, I know okay. people have tried that with some of the World War II graves and... Um, uh, it, it seems like it's uh, they they don't want to be bothered. No, they, unfortunately, yeah. you know, and and it's, it's part of the history now. Yeah, that 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 is misna- or yeah. mislabeled. Like that's that's the history. That's the story now, right? Well, even Correct. when those guys were still alive, there's that story of the uh, the Philip from I think the 140th Pennsylvania. Uh, his knapsack was stolen. Oh, yes, uh, by someone from another regiment who was killed. Right. Uh, that body was identified based on the knapsack, who had the incorrect name on it, <laughs> and was buried under said wow. name. And the uh, the living veteran, who had not been in fact <laughs> killed, came back to the cemetery, I think in the 1880s, yeah. uh, and visited his own grave uh, and had a, a, a fair amount of problems getting it changed then. Yeah. Well, uh, I'll, I'll put it to you this way. The <laughs> Park Service knows of about, what was it, about nine Confederates that are buried in the uh, yeah, National nine, Cemetery. Confederates buried in Union graves, and they're not going anywhere. Hmm. They're, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think there's, anything's going to change. And I, I was just thinking about your story, Eric, and um, imagine when he went for his pension. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, the red he tape? had a hard time getting a veteran's pension yeah. too. That that's part of it. Wow, um, Roy. Uh, oh God. Ah, uh, G. Biv. Roy no, G. Biv. Uh, the guy. Roy Frampton. Oh, Roy Frampton. Roy oh, Frampton I thought you were. I thought the, you were naming yeah. the guy. No, Roy Frampton b- wrote the uh, book about the National Cemetery, and and he included that. Uh, we that did story. an episode about the National Cemetery with Roy. Uh, and Roy talks about. Uh, that and story he talks about too. that story. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's a lot of a uh, lot of cool stories with the cemetery there. But yeah. I'm, okay. So I'm sorry. Uh, that was your question, JD. I, I, I'm hogging it from you here. Sorry. No, that wasn't my question. Oh no, it was for anybody. No, it that, was for anybody. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, good. I'm guys, glad I hogged it then. No, yeah. You guys would be way more qualified. Yeah. I I obviously answered it poorly. <laughs> so, yes. Well, I would say get a flashlight and a chisel. <laughs> no. Ma'am, what was your name? Did you say your name? Melinda. Melinda. That's right. Okay. Well, thank you very much for yeah. calling and, and good luck with, thank uh, you know, you. I hope maybe, you know, they'll, they'll do that for you, but I, I highly doubt it. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. Have a good one. Uh, okay, man. Every time I, I lose a call, another one comes in here. So let's go. Uh, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Another, another 10 minutes of calls, folks. Uh, five, five, nine, you're on the air. Hi, this is uh, Aaron from Central California, 39. Hello, Hello, welcome. Hi, I'm a big, big fan. Um, I especially like the, the Black Hill series and the, um, when you went to Deadwood and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was that was a fun mm. trip. Yeah. I, I wanted, I, and I actually got um, poker cards because uh, I wanted the ones without the numbers on them uh-huh. that they just have the, the suits. Yeah. And I got them from Amazon, so that was cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. But um, about Gettysburg, I was I was wondering, um, I have two questions. Uh, I was wondering about the flag that um, when Minnesota fought um, Virginia and they still have the flag in Minnesota, the Confederate battle flag, uh, if you could, if you have any uh, insight on that. The first and, Minnesota um, you're talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. There was a regiment from Minnesota that fought in Gettysburg and then they still have the the uh, battle yeah. flag um, in their state capital, and Virginia keeps asking for it back, right. and they won't give it to them. <laughs> right? Do you know the story, Eric? Also, yeah, I know. <laughs> go ahead, Eric. Give give them some insight. Uh, but, but also, like, oh, um, and been. if after that, after that, um, if you could just uh, on the JFK thing, if you could just give me your your guys's real thoughts on. Um, you know the whole conspiracy because it just really bothers me that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald had connections to the Soviet Union. I just never got over that. So if you could uh, kind of give your thoughts on that too. What's Thank your What's you. your name? Karen. 
Karen? Aaron. 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 Okay, Aaron. Yep, Aaron. All right, Aaron. Aaron. And, and yes. you, uh, let me just ask you, how old are you? 39. Okay, very good. All right, Eric, so go ahead with his first question about the first Minnesota. Well, um, are, are, are you asking to... Tell the story. Well, they captured the flag, no. and, and it's at the state capital, I, I assume. Yeah, they yeah. captured... What was it? The 30... What was the Virginia Regiment? 28th Virginia. 28th Virginia, yeah. right. And, and a lot of those Confederate flags have been returned uh, by certain states, but uh, Minnesota said no. Yeah. So, I mean, there's not really <laughs> much more to it than but that. But that's pretty much it, right? Is yeah. that what you were getting at, Aaron? Okay, yeah, I guess if there's no story to it, uh, yeah, I was just wondering. Well, no, it's just this funny story that they captured it in battle and Virginia's been begging for it back uh, for years and years, and Minnesota says, no. I can see both sides of that argument. Sure. <laughs> you know, where, yeah. where one side, like the, the, the first Minnesota, I mean, just got... Just Decimated. Got bludgeoned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're on the second day, so... Yeah, can I... Can I- can I ask uh, something else about Gettysburg, though? Because um, uh, the girl was talking about the haunted, the the kind of like the haunting behind Gettysburg, and I was yeah. wondering, like, when Mary Todd Lincoln's um, uh, child was died, I guess she she went into like kind of like an occult uh, thing where she. She went. Yeah, she was trying know, to like do. Uh, then, what do they, they call those? Spiritualism. The spiritualism. Yeah. yeah, she got into yeah, spiritualism. spiritualism. She would have seances. And um, the, is there any connection with that or anything like that? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. I don't. I don't think there's any any connection to Gettysburg in that that, that I'm aware of. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, the, uh, uh, the, there are people that do seances and stuff around here and stuff. But you want to talk about, okay, really quick about the JFK thing. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, Oswald was in the Marine Corps and he started demonstrating uh, Marxist tendencies. He was reading about communism and Marxism. And, and I, you know, I think he, he truly believed it. There's a really great recording that he made right before yep. the assassination where he talks about it. And he actually sounds really pretty versed in it yeah. and and you know at our museum we actually have some of his, some of his books some of his communist books and so he was a communist and you know it was kind of a edgy thing to do you know like kids do edgy things <laughs> yeah. um but, but back then you know they, they were like the ultimate enemy of the united states and so i i believe you know he, he was a rebel but i think he was a true communist and i think he believed in the philosophy and um you know if, if you ever access some of those recordings of him talking i believe it was on a new orleans uh radio station yep, that's and, right. and they're fantastic and and you, it really gives you a glimpse into his mind and and you know the, the leaving to live in the Soviet Union <laughs> um, you know giving up his citizenship I mean that's pretty extreme but you know he did it and it, they used it as propaganda and everything and I, I think um, once he got over there and realized he made a big mistake you know he tried to get back and um, you know we, we even have a document that, that inquires about that in our collection that's signed by him um maybe jd and i can do a video about that yeah, that'd be um, cool. yeah it's pretty neat and um you know I, I just think he was a communist and i think he he uh, he was a true believer of that philosophy and, and here here aaron i'll give you i'll give you one a little deeper uh he was a narcissist his mother was a narcissist and she was doting on him and he was a loser he was a loser the guy, if you study the guy, he had these delusions of grandeur about himself. He was, when he came back from Russia, he was upset that there weren't reporters at the airport waiting to talk to him. The great Marine defector. He thought that he was so important. He was a nut. And in April, I think it was, of 63, he tried to assassinate a right wing uh, general named uh, Walker. Uh, Walker. General Thank Walker. you, General Walker. Uh, tried to shoot him, and he's sitting there in his office in his house, you know, through the window, and the bullet missed him. Um, and they didn't connect Oswald to that crime until after Kennedy was killed and they had the rifle to match it. Um, and so he was all, he was trying to make a name for himself. An opportunity fell in his lap when he found out that the president's 
uh, motorcade was going to go right past the place where he had just gotten a job only a month before. And the conspiracy people say, oh, well, you know, Oswald got a job there so that he could take the shot. Nobody knew the parade route until I think it was five days or so before the assassination. So Oswald had already been there in October. He had gotten that job and it was luck. And sometimes life is just being in the right place at the right time and taking an opportunity. And unfortunately, in this case, the opportunity yeah, that he Trump. took was to kill President Kennedy. But, um, you know, like Trump, Ferdinand in World War One too. <laughs> yeah. Well, yep. yeah. Yep. And, and that's the thing is people have a hard time believing that history can turn on a dime because of a loser. Uh, that a man like Kennedy can be snuffed out because of some loser narcissist 23 year old who has no life and no promise of anything. And that's really, I believe what it is. And I used to be one of these Oliver Stone type people. You know, I was like, man, the grassy knoll. And it's like, I could, like, I could, we could honestly, I could sit and do a show for four hours about this and just poke holes and everything. I love this stuff. We should do it. I would love to do that. That'll be on our Patreon stuff. Yeah, please do it, guys. We're we're, we're just loving you guys. Thank thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you for the call. Great question. Where is Oswald's rifle? Is that like in a closet? National Archives has it. In the archives? Okay. Yeah. I thought maybe you had it in the back room there. Have you ever been to this? Sixth Floor Museum? Yes, I have. I, I've got to go down there. I've never been down I've there. Have been you there ooh, you got to do that. Yeah. You got to go down yeah. there. That would be fun. Put that at the top of the list. I should. Go to, go to that before everything else. <laughs> yeah, I like that. We should take something there. Yeah. You know, okay, I, I got to give a little tease. Um, you know, and, and this has been done a little bit, um, but one of the things JD and I are going to do is take artifacts to the spot. And, you know, of course, that's been done a little bit here, but it hasn't been done a whole lot in... Europe. So um, in, in 2017, 2018, I, I did two tours in Europe and I brought artifacts back to the spot. We actually brought the keys to the Eagle's Nest back to the Eagle's Nest. No way. And had our friend Bradford Freeman, the easy company vet that wrote the forward to Jared and, and, and my book, uh, turn the keys in the in the spot. So we were thinking of doing something like that. But I don't want to give yeah. too much away, but we were planning a trip um, hopefully this fall over to Normandy or Germany or That's something. That's awesome. We're gonna bring some cool items with us. We've been generating a lot of ideas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good. <laughs> don't give them away. I'm going to steal them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. 513. Five Five one three. You are on the air. Hi, um, my name's Nick. Um, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh-huh. Um, I'm a longtime fan of JD's. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, no problem, man. Uh, I, we've actually conversed a few times over Instagram. Uh, okay. My uh, my handle on there is uh, Mossy World War Two guy. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I um, so I had a few questions about Gettysburg. Um, I tried to. I'm going down there for my birthday. Um, and I just had a few questions on, uh, I, you know, I tried to uh, book at the Federal Point Inn. Obviously yeah, good. It's booked up. Oh, it's booked up? Is there, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's booked up. Um, is there any other historical hotels um, there that you guys would suggest? I like the, well, it's not the James Gettys anymore. It's called the Union Hotel, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's on Chambersburg Street. Um, the Gettysburg Hotel on the square is nice. Uh, if you like okay. like actual like Civil War houses and stuff, um, the Bradford, well, that's that goes back to the colonial days. Uh, Battlefield Bed and Breakfast. Battlefield Bread Battlefield and Breakfast. Bed and breakfast. I stayed there. Um, I'm yeah. getting married there. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was oh, the other? Awesome. Uh, yeah. Balladary Inn. Balladary Inn is another one. There, there's a lot of places. Oh, yeah. Farnsworth House. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. got uh, rooms there. There's also an Airbnb that just opened up. So whenever I was here in June, I was the first person oh, to, look at you. to get to stay in it. Okay, uh, And it's on East okay. High Street called the Row House. So that that's another option. Too. Right. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, check out Airbnb. There's a lot of cool places there, on there Airbnb. There are a ton of places. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there are a lot of places you okay. can find. I, and I, I haven't stayed in a bad one yet. Like, yeah. They're all great. And you know, yeah. uh, not to uh, shamelessly... There's anything bad around there. <laughs> yeah, no, there aren't. Uh, well... <laughs> I'm not going to name them, but uh, not to shamelessly plug our show, but every Friday we do a live show on Facebook and soon on YouTube um, where we discuss everything that's going on today. So like if you're coming in for the weekend, um, you know, we kind of like fill you in on what there is to do. So uh, you wouldn't have to uh, sit there, wonder what to do or where to go. So 
But anyway. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Uh, do you have another question um, or is that it? I also have one more. Okay. I also have one more question for Eric. Um, when I stop into your museum, uh, would you be able to sign my book? Absolutely. I'd be glad to do that. Seventy five dollars. Hey, hey, I'll pay whatever cost. It's ah, one hundred and seventy five. Have, have, have you read Hang Tough yet? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm actually into the third chapter. Okay, great. Um, great. I, I only get a limited time to be able to, to read, but yeah, it's, uh, it's so far it's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're, you're gonna love the museum. It's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I can't describe yeah, it, but I'm, it's, I'm, it's, I would it's a, to take my breath away a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's there's some pretty great stuff in there. Um, Ava Braun's negligee. You still have that? We have some of Ava Braun's items. Yeah. Yeah. Ava Braun's negligee. Like who would? Where? where why would you think of it? But but there it is. <laughs> there it is, right next to Hitler's silverware. <laughs> yeah. Like it's all. Well, well some it's of that stuff was used to wrap the silverware when they sent it home. So you know. <laughs> See, I love this stuff. Yeah, yeah you got you have Absolutely. to go there, ladies and gentlemen. All right, sir. Thank you very much for the call. I gotta hey, I gotta thanks. move this along. Um thank yeah, you for you calling. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Uh okay, three two zero. And then uh let's all right, we're gonna do five more minutes. So three two zero, make it quick, right to the point. Thank you. <laughs> yes, JD, when are you gonna do one on the Amer- on women of the civil war that served? Very good question. Thank you very much. On uh, women of the Civil War that served? Yes. Um, so so I would need to do a, a little bit more digging on that. I, I, so one thing that I tried to do with the Gettysburg series is not just tell military stories, but to talk about some of the civilians and some of the you know things that, that women went through and things like that. Uh, really, what I would need to do is just dig into that a little bit more and find the right vehicle to tell that story um have you been to the shriver house here yeah i did a video there okay oh you did okay yep. good yeah well, so you, did. you did one on jenny wade yep and did one on on jenny uh-huh. wade okay. um yeah but um yeah with with the the history traveler series I, I i need like a place to go and something to show right um in in order to tell tell us a, a story you know i think i can help you there Okay. We got some cool stuff. Well, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That All works right. out fine. All right. So good. We, we may have something in the works. <laughs> Very good. All right. Good. Uh, 989, you are on the air. Quick and to the point, please. 989. Hello. 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 Me now? Is it me? Yes, it's there you. Go. Hey, it's I think Gettysburg. It's uh, Rick uh, from Holt Lake, Michigan. I've talked to you several times on Instagram. Yes, sir. How you doing, Rick? Good. How are you? I missed those, uh, the uh, port side cigar and, and adult beverage night. <laughs> yeah. With it, with, well, yeah. When was that? What are you talking about? Your porch chat. Oh, it, oh my porch chat. Yeah, your porch chat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been too muggy. <laughs> as soon as I get home in the air conditioner, I don't want to go out on the porch and sit there and sweat again. Yeah, I can imagine that. It's I'm been getting muggy old. Too, but, uh, I've been... Uh, so, so I've kind of established a little bromance there with JD. I, I've been watching his channel now religiously, awesome. and uh, nice. I, I'm looking to drop an app for an assistant if he's looking for one. For for an assistant wants to drop an aspirin for an, yeah, assistant. For an assistant. Oh, um, no, an application for an application. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you what that. <laughs> You say that, but um, <laughs> Eric can attest to the fact that that watching me try and film some of this stuff is is probably like one of the most painful things ever. Like yeah. they could take what I do and like use it as an enhanced interrogation technique at Guantanamo, <laughs> and the you know, could give up all of their secrets. They'd be like, "Oh, please, just get me away from this guy." Uh, <laughs> you, so you're saying that you would be tough to assist. Oh, uh, it, it would be boring. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it would be boring. I would, I would, it would do it anyway. I, I spent time in the military. I'm pretty sure I could take the interrogation. See, now, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. And uh, so he's offering to assist you, right? Mm. Comes out of the woodwork. Eric, my Eric, came out of the woodwork uh, uh, over a year ago. Literally, we were on Culp's Hill and he came out of the woods. And um, he uh, he said, do you need help? Yeah. And I said, are you a psychiatrist? And he said, no, 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 with the show. And I said, oh, yes, I do need that as well. And when I, I said, you know, he said, well, what do you need help with? I said, everything. So what, what, what have you done? Like, what do you do? And he told me. And when I heard military, I said, 
I need a, I need a manager. I need a producer. I need somebody who can keep me organized. Yeah. And um, so if this guy was in the military and he's saying he can handle the torture, Eric can handle the torture. I would, I would uh, take him up on it. I mean, if you could, if All you right. could, you know, I mean, it's up to you. But that, let me just say, military guys are good uh, uh, assistants, managers, whatever. I, I am getting into uh, like doing group tours and stuff like that, um, where where you know we can go to some of these sites, you know, together. Sure. And, and uh, like I'm planning one to Normandy uh, for, for next spring. So it's still in the planning stages and hope to have it put together here pretty soon. Uh, but we'll be doing some filming there. Um, you know, whenever I do that. Right. So, okay, good. Rick, thanks for the call. I got to move on. Next, and, uh, I, and I got, go ahead. Wow, okay. wow, wow. Real quick. I have one question for JD. Are you ever going to do anything with service academies? Any tours of service academies? Any tours of service academies? Yeah. West point. Not, oh oh West yeah, point, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. One of these days. That's that's uh, definitely something that's on my my big list. All right, very good. Thanks. We got a kid at the we got a kid at the Naval Academy. So, oh, there oh you go. awesome, okay. awesome, cool. All right, well, you guys have a great night. Thanks for taking the call. You All too. Right. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Good to hear good from you, Rick. You. Thanks. Okay, last call here, ladies and gentlemen. Last call. Although there are more, but I we got it. We got it. Nine one seven. You're on the air. Hey, fellas. Thanks for taking the call. Uh, just like Soprano said, I got a couple of three things. First, JD, thanks for the great tip on the uh, Federal Point Hotel. Oh, awesome. Uh, on my way back from New York to Chattanooga, I lucked out and they had one room left and it was the suite on the first floor. Oh, we had a great two or three nights there. Nice. Outstanding. And uh, while we were in town, I tried to go to the History Museum and I struck out there. It was closed, unfortunately. So I've got to get it back there. Uh, JD, when you were on Colt Hill doing your filming, yep. I know they had cleared out the brush to mm -hmm. see Forbes Rock and walk up and down the hill. I didn't see it on your video. Did you actually get down the Forbes Rock? So uh, somebody left a, a comment uh, on that video uh, about Forbes Rock. And um, I am just like a whole lot of people. I'm still learning. Uh, so whenever I shot that, I didn't know anything about Forbes Rock. So whenever when did okay, you shoot that it? Was me? That was me. Oh, JD. was it? Oh, was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Small yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. So so I I actually appreciate oh. that because um, whenever you know somebody says, "Hey, did you see Forbes Rock? Or did you see this? Or did you see that?" It, that's an opportunity for me to learn. Um, yeah. So yeah. Good. So that's uh, that's well, uh, going the to be the last thing I have. Sure. Good. I'm on the. Uh, I'm a member of the American Battlefield Trust, but I'm on the uh, board down here at Chickamauga Chattanooga Battlefield uh, mm -hmm. Civil War Roundtable. Yep. And I just want to throw the invite. If you're ever back down here, I'd love to show you around on a personal tour down here. Maybe spot that you didn't hit the first time you were here in town, and uh, we can hook up and uh, show you around town. I. I am going to get back to Chickamauga, uh, but but that is a that is a battle that I have to get my head wrapped around, uh, just because it. Yeah, I just got to spend some time with it because that one is confusing to me, and, and I want to make sure I've had a lot of people right. ask me about Chickamauga, uh, so I want to make sure that that Good. I do it right whenever I come down. Well, when you're ready, uh, reach out and. Uh We'll certainly take great care of you down here. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very nice. Thank you very much for the call. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a great Oh, sorry about that. I didn't mean to do that too early, but uh, <laughs> it always happens because yeah. there's a bit of a delay. Oh, okay. You know, so you, yeah. you press the button and it doesn't do it, and then you think they're not talking, and then they start talking, you hang up on them. Okay, one more. <laughs> 317, you're oh, on the air. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for taking my call. Um, JD is Kenneth from North Carolina. Uh -huh. Um South Carolina, how do you like that? Hey man, love your channel. Thank you. Been watching it for over a year. It's fantastic. Um, but I had a, everybody's asking you kind of stuff, which is cool. But I had a question for Eric. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're talking about, you know, people have ephemera, people have things. Um, how do you hold things to where they keep? How do you keep things well? And donations, like my thing is I've got some cool flags. I'm an aircraft guy. I got all kinds of different things but I collected paper stuff for years and I'm kind of divesting myself of things, but you just don't want to go to a big collection and not see it. You don't want people to look at it. I mean, what do you, what's your thoughts about stuff like that to where people can actually go and see things? Well, it's a little tough with and that's paper. All I got, so I appreciate it. 
Yeah, it's a little tough with some certain paper items, especially things like diaries or books, and you can't really display it, and and it's hard to let people go through old paper items because it gets messed up. I guess the 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 the, the main way to do it now is they digitize it and make it available that way, um, you know, so so people can access it and maybe put it online or something, but. Um, you know, it's it, it does get a little bit tough with paper items, and um, we we usually archive most of that stuff. And um, you know, we we do have some paper items out, but when it comes to things like books and diaries, that we we keep them put away or just display the 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 first page or something like that. But yeah, it, it, it's tough, you know, because you you just can't have it being handled by everyone that comes in the museum, obviously. Yeah, I've, I'm very careful when I bring things out myself. You know, I let my girls look at it. I want them to see the history, you know, and and uh, that's the thing I think a lot of people are getting away from is showing the history. When you have it, just show people, just show them around with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What items do you have specifically? Oh, I, it's kind of crazy. I collected for years, um, like, learning manuals on how to use the ball turret. Um, things oh, like that cool. from aircraft. I've got yeah. stacks of that. And what's really cool is I've got five or six of those same pamphlets. On the back, it's stacked, uh, stamped official Alamogordo, New Mexico. And it's dated during the time when they were doing the atomic bomb. I went back and looked at it and looked at all the different things they did. It's really interesting. Just some pamphlets. No, no one ever would think to kind of put, tie that stuff together. And I've got a couple really neat, you know, uh, flags more of a communist flag kind of almost a cold war kind of thing yeah like stuff you want people to look at i mean it's fascinating stuff yeah. yeah yeah well thank you for preserving it well i have to give you a call and see if there's something you can maybe use because i'm divesting as they say so okay. <laughs> well, um, but i appreciate it all you guys are doing great work so i really appreciate it thank well, you. E- email thank us you. pictures if you want info at gettysburg museum of history.com you can uh, send an email Absolutely. I'll do that. And thanks for your time, guys. All right. Thank thank you you for the call. Thank you very much. And thank all of you for watching. And if I just may take a moment here, I would like to thank JD for letting us hijack his uh, stream. I would like to thank all of you for putting up with me (laughs) as the host. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, in case you're crazy and you'd like to learn more about Gettysburg, addressing Gettysburg is all about you learning about Gettysburg. And like I said, we have a, fr- uh, a live show Fridays that talks about everything that's going on in town today. So you can kind of get like uh, a feeling of what it's like to live here without actually living here. But if you come to visit that weekend, you'll know what's going on and all the things that you can go and do. Um, so please check us out. And uh, eat. we're on YouTube now. So you can go to YouTube. You can get us anywhere you can find podcasts. So thank you very much for that. Eric Dor. The, the the Gettysburg Museum of History, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just saying this because he's looking at me right now and he's got two guns in that case over there. I really think it is the best museum in town and one of the best museums that you could probably find. I can't imagine one as good or better, honestly. And so, Eric, thank you for coming on. I know I've been bugging you for two years to come on. Yeah, I'm well, glad. thank you. <laughs> I'm glad JD finally convinced you to do it. <laughs> and, uh, but we'll have you on again to talk more about the museum, I hope. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure. Um, address. 219 Baltimore Street. Where can they find you online? Gettysburg Museum of History.com and Facebook page Gettysburg Museum of History. The phone number or just email or how do you want them to come Email info you? at Gettysburg Museum of History.com. JD, everybody watching knows you already because this is your channel. <laughs> <laughs> so there's really no need for me to uh, ask you to give all that information. But in case they haven't found you otherwhere, elsewhere, <laughs> yeah. uh, what, uh, uh, Instagram? Uh, right, right where you're watching right now. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, Instagram, Facebook, That's those are the two platforms where I'm most right. active. All right, very good. Yeah. This has been fun, though. I, I really, this was a great idea. Yeah. I'm glad you uh, you asked to do it. I'm glad I made it more obnoxious by hijacking your feed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Whatever. Have a good night. Take care of yourselves.